Okay, I'm going to talk about uh, contrast agents uh, in gallbladder disease. And shortest cystitis is, of course, one of the most important um, indications. Can we turn down the light, please? But of course, to, to start with, uh, an uncomplicated shortest cystitis does not require serious, of course. But on the other side, yes, it's a standard procedure uh, if you have the clinical um, idea of a, a shallow cystitis that you use, of course, uh, ultrasound. It is helpful in diagnosing ulcerative shallow cystitis and to prove perforation and is thus helping us to define the best time for surgery. And I think this is a very important point. So a patient comes in, into the hospital and the question is, shallow cystitis, when should we go uh, for uh, surgery? A complicated shallow cystitis may clinically remain undetected under antibiotic therapy. That is an important point because we see, and I will show you some examples of that, where patients under antibiotic therapy have no complaints anymore, uh, although we have a necrosis of the wall, we have gangrenous um, shallow cystitis and a perforation. So you have to have in mind that um, when you have a necrosis of the wall, that also means you have a denervation of the wall and a relief of pain. So the Murphy sign uh, has been reported to be negative in uh, more than 60% of gangrenous and shallow cystitis. And of course, it helps in characterizing and station uh, and staging of benign malignant gallbladder tumors, and that will be the last point of my talk. Now, what to expect from seals? Number one, inflammatory uh, process of the wall. We can image that. Early enhancement of the thickened wall, no enhancement of adjacent organs. And when the inflammation proceeds, then we have a peri um, basical edema, enhancement of the adjacent fatty tissue, the liver parenchyma, and the duodenal wall. And then we have mucosal ulcerations, gangrenous uh, shallow cystitis, and that's leading to perforation. And you know, we have these Niemeyer classification type 1, 2, and 3. Okay, this is just to show you acute shallow cystitis, elevated liver tests. Uh, so what we can see then is what we named uh, reactive hepatitis, and this is a term uh, that was used uh, by uh, Garethy in clinical pathology in '94. So when we give contrast, then you can see quite nicely the enhancement of the adjacent um, hepatic or uh, liver tissue. It is hypervascularized, and that is something as a reaction to due to the inflammatory process that you can see not only, of course, with seals, but you can see that also, of course, on CT, as you all know. Then we look at patients. Uh, this is a patient also with elevated liver tests. What you can see here, these are ulcerations of the wall. So this patient is, um, or. We will, well, we can expect perforation if we do not perform treatment and shallow cystectomy because this is the first step to um, perforation of the gallbladder. And when the contrast is arriving, you can see again the um, uh, perivesical enhancements of the reactive hepatitis when the loop is starting again. You can, or I can go back. So when we look at that, you see. This is the reactive hepatitis here. So this is one of the first things that you can see when you have an inflammation that is going beyond the wall of the um, gallbladder. And this is from this patient. This is the uh, gross specimen uh, after um, uh, gall, uh, after shallow cystectomy. Another patient come, coming in and had no complaints. Uh, the, uh, the referring doctor. Uh, uh, was quite surprised what he saw when he looked at the gallbladder and said, oh, there's something wrong with the gallbladder. Please go and have a specialist uh, for uh, examination or uh, to examine your gallbladder. And this is what we saw. We saw ulcerations um, of the gallbladder wall. The patient also had a gallbladder stone. This is not in this image. Um, this is what we can do in a 3D technique. This is 13 seconds after uh, injection of the contrast agent, you can see the vessels of the uh, wall of the gallbladder. And when we wait a little bit, then you can see the ulcerations. Here are the ulcerations. Nice to see, I think. This is another patient. Uh, this patient was symptomatic with an acute shallow cystitis. And this is how the gallbladder looked like. And when you give contrast, then you can see very nicely the um, uh, enhancement of the 
gallbladder wall, and you can see there are ulcerations here. Perforation, perforation into the wall of the thickened gallbladder wall here is a suspected abscess of the gallbladder wall. And this is again from another, or from the intercostal approach, you can see again, this is the perforation of the wall. So gangrenous cystitis, this symptomatic patient And it matches very well with the intraoperative findings and the gross specimen that we got from our pathologist. This is another patient who had uh, right upper quadrant pain, went to his doctor and he said, I will not go into hospital, please do something else, but I uh, refused to go into hospital. Uh, so he got uh, antibiotics and then the patient came back and that was the order from his doctor, please come back. Uh, no matter if it comes, becomes better or worse. So he came back to him and says, I was completely right. I have no complaints anymore. And then the doctor says, oh, fine. I've done everything correctly. So he uh, looked again at his gallbladder and had this image. And he said, please do me a favor. Go to the hospital. And uh, if they say you can go home again, that's OK, but I don't think so. So he came, and I could compress with my transducer every part of the um, uh, subcostal area without any complaints. And this is how the gallbladder looked like. And this is the, the power of imaging is also a power for convincing patients. Because this patient, I was explaining to him, this is a perforation of your gallbladder. And uh, this is an abscess. And uh, this patient uh, then said, OK, you convinced me. I'll stay here and get my gallbladder removed. So. That was a interesting. This is another patient. Uh, he comes from the home of the elderly. He had right upper quadrant uh, pain five days ago. Now no pain anymore. He called the doctor and received antibiotics. And after that, he felt fine again. But two days later, he started vomiting. Uh, so and that was the reason an, an old patient, after vomiting, losing uh, fluid, um, he uh, was in a bad condition, but not because of pain, but um, because uh, he was very sick and um, low blood pressure, and, you know, but no pain. So this is his stomach filled with fluid, and this is how the gallbladder looked like. Of course, everybody can see that this is perforation of the gallbladder. Uh, into the duodenum. That is not the problem. The question is, why is he vomiting all the time? And that is something that we can see by using contrast. You can see again, uh, this uh, reactive hepatitis, and this is a perforation, actually in two places here. So this is the duodenum, and the patient was vomiting because he has an, had an occlusion of his uh, duodenum. So nothing was going through the duodenum because of the inflammation of the wall. And that was, uh, there was an edema here, severe edema. So I showed that to our surgeon. And one, after, uh, one hour later, he was uh, operated. And uh, that was, of course, confirmed the diagnosis. This is uh, a patient after shoulder cystectomy, no fever, but uh, his uh, white blood cell count was rising. Uh, so we were looking at him, and again what you can see here is a reactive hepatitis, and you can see fluid here, so we performed puncture, and uh, yeah, that was pus, so it was an abscess post-surgery. You can see reactive hepatitis. So this is a perforation, a Niemeyer type 1. You don't see any gallbladder anymore. So with contrast, of course, you can see a little bit better the uh, free fluid. So this is a bile in the abdomen, the free abdomen. This is another emergency case. So this patient had uh, stones in his uh, common bile duct and uh, was referred to our hospital. So they said, OK, no problem. Uh, we will uh, get the stones and um, we'll put a stand in it. And during this procedure, the patient uh, had severe pain all of a sudden. Uh, so they had to um, stop that procedure. So, and then they went to uh, our lab, and then we had a look at it. And we saw that there is a problem here in the artery. So we gave contrast. 
what you can see here, this is an aneurysm of the hepatic artery. So the wire that they put in first, they perforated the wall of the common bile duct and perforated also the wall of the hepatic artery. And what you can see quite nicely here, this is the, the common bile duct. Show you soon. Yeah, this is, this is the common bile duct. And you can see blood flowing into the common bile duct. Okay, uh, so then that was, of course, something for our radiologists. So they, they put in then a stent. So you can see the stent here. And, of course, we can control that. And we can see that everything is okay. You can still see this is a common bile duct, but no blood anymore, no, no fistula anymore into the common bile duct. Interestingly, uh, a day later, 24 hours later, there was uh, no hematoma in the common bile duct anymore. This is something I'd like to show you because uh, it is not a pathology of the gallbladder wall, mm. but it shows you the, the background, maybe why a carcinoma of the gallbladder wall has such a poor prognosis. So this is something that you can see every day. You see a fatty liver disease and areas are spared. So this is focal fatty sparing. Uh, here in the um, uh, close to the gallbladder. And now we give contrast. And what you can see now is some vessels flowing from the wall of the gallbladder into the uh, um, portal venous branches. So this is a shunting between uh, the veins of the gallbladder wall and the portal veins. This is very important because this is the reason why we have a focal fatty sparing. Focal fatty sparing in the liver is always a um, not balanced uh, distribution of systemic blood with less fatty, uh, free fatty uh, uh, acids and uh, insulin and systemic blood. Systemic blood has less insulin concentration and less fatty acids. So an area which is uh, dominantly um, perfused by systemic blood uh, has less fatty infiltrations there. So this is just to have that in mind. Uh, we can see that also, of course, in the, in the segment 4B uh, in the uh, liver hilum. Okay, and this is an, okay, so we are talking about less than one millimeter vessel size here. Okay, so this is a gallbladder polype. You can see very nicely uh, the uh, uh, perfusion of the wall of the uh, polype, so that is not so interesting. What is more interesting is maybe this case. So here is the polype. When you look again very carefully, you can see that there are vessels here from the here, from the wall of the gallbladder going into the uh, uh, portal venous branches here. And my idea is that this is one of the reasons why the prognosis of gallbladder cancer is so poor because you have very often these shunts and these shunts also mean that tumor cells are immediately going into the gall into the uh, adjacent liver tissue making the prognosis so poor okay Okay, so this was an incidental finding uh, of a 32-year-old female four weeks after delivery. So she had some problems uh, because there was a, uh, uh, she had pain in her uh, lower or in the, her abdomen, and we were looking uh, at her. And this is what we found uh, in the uh, gallbladder. So it looked like the tumor. See quite nicely here, and. Then we gave contrast, and you can see this is the only case I have of a gallbladder adenoma. Gallbladder adenomas are very rare in Europe and in North America, much more often in Asian countries. And uh, this is the specimen, the gross specimen. And uh, this was a cancerous gallbladder adenoma. So there were cancerous cells invading the gallbladder wall, but not invading the liver tissue. So that was, and I, we have now a follow-up over eight years, and uh, she has no recurrence of the tumor. Adenomyomatosis, you all know this. Uh, we have these intramural cystic lesions, these Rokitansky-Ashrofsinos, uh, and uh, we very often find in these 
cystic areas within the thickened gallbladder wall, we find calcifications or small stones. So this makes the diagnosis easy. Okay, so this is adenomyomatosis at the tip of the gallbladder. So this is a very typical finding. And when we give contrast, we can confirm that this is not a tumor invading uh, the wall. So you, the wall can be delineated very nicely here. So this is the wall. And we can even see a little bit better the uh, rokitansky ashoff sinus. So this is typical finding for uh, adenomyomatosis. Gallbladder cancer, you all know the statistics, less than 50% of the gallbladder cancers are diagnosed preoperatively, so it's very often an incidental finding uh, by, done by the uh, pathologist. Um, gallbladder cancers are diagnosed in later stages. Uh, the overall five-year survival rate is less than 5%. Okay, so this is one of the challenges that we have. So this is a patient with a... Uh, gallbladder stones, uh, you see sludge that is completely filled, fills the lumen of the gallbladder. But what we were thinking about is, what is this here? We, had, we were lucky because this area here is a little bit more eco-poor compared to the uh, sludge in the gallbladder wall. So that we decided to perform a contrast study. Um, have a look here. This is a tumor. So this is a gallbladder tumor uh, that was confirmed by histology after surgery. And this is, of course, a, a patient, 61 years old, asymptomatic, and she told us, I have gallbladder stones. I know that since 30 years, so that I have no complaints, nothing. <coughs> uh, but uh, it looked really very serious because we could not really delineate the wall of the gallbladder uh, from, the, uh, from the liver. And this is the study, contrast study, and you can see hyper-enhancing tissue uh, here in the liver, adjacent to the gallbladder wall. I want to wait a bit, and you can see it's here washing out, the tumor is washing out. And that makes it much more clearer than the grayscale image. So we confirm here a infiltrating adenocarcinoma of the gallbladder wall. This is uh, my last case, <coughs> the patient with the uh, malignant melanoma. And uh, when we looked at the gallbladder, we could see, yeah, here's a tumor, it's a mass. That is not the only one. We counted, I think, uh, four or five masses. This is the biggest one. And then we gave contrast. And it was interesting to see the behavior because the bubbles are running from the gallbladder wall into the tumor, but not invading the liver. And that is what we found. We have now, I think, uh, four or five patients with metastasis from melanoma into the gallbladder wall, and they all, on contrast, behave in the same way. They all do not um, infiltrate the liver. Uh, they inf they, the, the tumor grows from the wall into the lumen of the gallbladder. So this is number one. This is tumor number two. Three, four, and this is sludge. Here's another one. Okay, so thank you very much for your attention.